All right, in this part, we're going to show the proof that the Holy Spirit is not a dove, and in fact, where this teaching came from. All right, I'm joined by my lovely assistant here, and uh, we're going to go through the scriptures. So first, let's go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. I'm going to turn to my King James Bible. You turn in your Reams New Testament. Oh, boy. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16. The Word of God, the King James Bible says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Go ahead. And Jesus, being baptized, forthwith came out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and coming upon him. Okay. Go ahead and uh, just close it. Close the cover there so the bookmark doesn't fall out. Show the thing to the people there. Okay. So there you have it. This is put out by Catholics, for Catholics. Got my hands on one years ago. Next, we're going to go to Mark chapter 1, verse 10. Mark chapter 1, verse 10. Another reference to this. Mark chapter 1, verse 10 says, And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened, and the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. Reams New Testament. And forthwith coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened, and the Spirit as a dove descending and remaining on him. As a dove. Again, just make this thing, let's just make this clear. If I say to you, she runs like the wind, that doesn't mean that she's the wind. Okay? That car is, that thing just moves down the highway like lightning. Doesn't mean it's lightning. Okay? The Holy Spirit is coming down like a dove. A dove kind of flies down like that, flaps the wings a little bit or whatever else, the Holy Spirit descending like a dove. The King James Bible says like. The Reims says as a dove. Okay, very important distinction there. Luke chapter 3, verse 22. Go to the next one. I'd like to do a, a study at some point in time in the future. I don't know if I'll ever get around to it, but... Just showing the, the absolute horrible corruptions in this Reims New Testament. Uh, it's so funny that the, the uh, pre-Vatican II Catholics, they'll come out and they'll say, the Reims is the most accurate translation, English translation ever. And they forget to mention or they are ignorant of the Chaloner revision that had to happen. I think it was in the 1800s sometime where the Reims, Dewey Reims Bible, Dewey was the Old Testament, Reims New Testament. But it was updated to read more like the King James Bible in the 1800s. They kind of miss that fact. You know, a modern Dewey Reams will read more like the King James Bible than this old 1610 edition of Dewey Reams. This Reams is actually 1582 when it came out. But anyways, Luke chapter 3 verse 22 says, And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. Again, you see a bodily shape like a dove. It doesn't say that it is a dove. That's very important to understand. Go ahead and read that one. And the Holy Ghost descended in corporal shape as a dove upon him, and a voice from heaven was made. Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So again, as a dove. Corporal shape. Boy, that's a lot better than bodily shape, you know. A lot clearer there. Next, and finally, let's go to John chapter 1, verse 32. John chapter 1, verse 32, King James Bible says, And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him like a dove. Okay? Reams. And John gave te testimony, saying, That I saw the Spirit descending as a dove from heaven, and he remained upon him. Yep. So there you have it. King James Bible very clean plainly teaches that it is like a dove, like 
you know, the bodily shape like a dove. It does not ever say that the Holy Spirit is a dove. Ever. I mean, think about that. Let's just go with the traditional Trinitarian belief system. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Is a dove a person? No. Oh, that's a problem. But I'm going to show you here. We're going to show a whole lot of different things in this study. We can put this thing down here. There it is. The Reims uh, New Testament. Very, very uh, prized piece of my collection. You've got to be so careful with it. Ooh. Call me Butterfingers, you know, I just <laughs> dropped there. <clears throat> Not proper reference, I guess. Reference? Reference? I don't know, something like that. All right. I'm going to show you here real quickly. You say, well, that, that, okay, it says as a dove, but they don't really teach that it's a dove. Here we have New St. Joseph First Communion Catechism. Right there. Page 16. What do we call the three persons in one God? We call the three persons in one God the Blessed Trinity. The Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is God. All three persons are one God. We call them the Blessed Trinity. We picture God the Father as a kind Father. You know, Holy Father, you know, the Pope. But He is really a spirit. We cannot see a spirit. It is easy to picture God the Son because He really became man. Not to make any graven images of the Godhead, but why bother with that? You know, if, if you're a Catholic, you know, just take the, the commandment about graven images, you know, out of the, you know, Old Testament there. We picture God the Holy Ghost as a dove, but he too is really a spirit. We also call him the Holy Spirit. All three persons are equal. And I see this in the comments all the time. These people, these Trinitarians, it's three persons. It's three persons. Denning, you're, you're a heretic. It's three persons. Why can't you get that through your head? Because the Bible never says that they are persons. But right there you have it. Right there is the page. And right there you see the lucky clover. I guess it's not very lucky there because you don't have a, it's not a four-leaf clover, so it's it's you know you got it Mary in there is the fourth member of the uh, Godhead entity or whatever. The quad entity. Um and you say, Oh, come on, you're being ridiculous here. Well, first and foremost, right there you have page 21, Blessed Virgin Mary with her mother, St. Anne, the Immaculate Conception. Um, Mary's soul was always turned God. God made Mary, he kept her free from original sin, the Immaculate Deception. Right there you have it. Mary was sinless according to Catholicism. And let me just show you here. And there you have another image of the Trinity in heaven, Father, Son, and Bertie. He's just beaming down there to Mary, you know, the fourth member of the Trinity. You say, oh, now no, come on, this is just crazy. They don't teach that. Well, let me show you here. Father, Bertie, going down here to Christ. And look, cool. Redemptrix, she's suffering with Christ. You see? You see the four? Like I talked about in the Satanic Trinity thing. Holy Mother Church. The church is our ladder to heaven. Jesus helps all men to gain heaven through the Catholic Church. There it is. God in three persons with the little dove and Mary helping the kids up the ladder. Right there it is. You say, no, it's a child's book. It's a child's book. How dare you? It's, this, this is an official Catholic teaching. Um, then why does it have the Nihil Obstat and the imprimatur of Francis Cardinal Spellman, Archbishop of New York? Right there. Nothing objectionable. This is a fa official Catholic doctrine. Right here. Don't tell me, well, the Catholic, well, we don't believe that. It's official Catholic doctrine. But it gets even better with the old dove, the love dove. Okay. Um, it says here, God sent the Holy Spirit to make her the mother of his son. This is page 48 of the 
New St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism. This one's for older children. All right. Again, you have the dove right down there. You see it? Here comes a dove. Look out. Dive bombiter. But here it gets really peculiar. This is where it gets fun. St. Francis de Sales gave this comparison. If a farmer owns a garden, he has the right to what it produces. If a dove drops a seed into the garden and a flower grows, does the farmer not own the, fl the flower? Okay. You ready for this? St. Joseph is the farmer and the garden is Mary. St. Joseph, as Mary's husband, would have rights over the fruit that is Mary's child. The Holy Spirit, the dove, dropped a seed into Mary in a spiritual manner. The flower that grew from her was Christ. Did not Joseph have a father's right over Christ, even though it was not he who planted the seed? Certainly he did, and Christ recognized St. Joseph's rights by obeying him as a father. So the Holy Spirit dove, right there, flew over Mary and dropped a seed into her. You're reading it. Okay. Nihil obstat. Imprimatur. Nothing objectionable. All in line with Catholic teaching. Um, now, I'm a country boy. Okay, which a lot of the people, a lot of the papists make fun of me uh, for that. Oh, he's just a country hick and whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I've seen the way that birds plant seeds, okay? Um, they don't drop them with their mouth. I'll just give you a little hint. The seed is planted with uh, added fertilizer, okay? Uh, so if the Holy Spirit dove dropped a seed into Mary, you know, it's a, you know. <laughs> I mean, chapter and verse, please. Uh, not there. Uh, the Holy Spirit birdie dropped a seed into Mary. Ooh, yeah. Um, page 59, the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God in the third person of the Blessed Trinity. The Holy Spirit, symbolized by a dove, comes from the Father and the Son like love from the heart. He is the mutual love of the Father and the Son. Yeah, look out for that too. I talked about that. Nihil obstat, imprimatur, nothing objectionable. Got to have that spirit there that gives power to both the Father and the Son. You see? See how that thing works? Again, make sure you take good care of these. <clears throat> Bunch of crap. Uh, Holy Trinity, the three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in one God. All right, and over here you have Holy Ghost, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, the spirit of divine love, God. This is the Catholic Picture Dictionary right there. And this is page 66. Nothing to that. There you go. And over here, there you go. It's a dove. Um, can I just be a little crude here for a minute? I know it's surprising to people, but um, if it was a dove that supposedly dropped a seed into Mary, wouldn't that be bestiality? And, and how could the third person of the Trinity be a bird? Uh, last time I checked, birds aren't persons. Okay. We'll get back to that thing there in a minute. Um <clears throat> Here we have uh, the Vatican Council, 1869 to 1870, chapter 1, the Holy Trinity. Of all the mysteries that we profess in the light of faith, the supreme mystery is God himself, who is one in essence, three in persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. According to the true truth of the Catholic faith, the Blessed Trinity is one God because of the essence or substance common to the three persons is really and numerically one. From all eternity, the Father generates the Son, not in producing by emanation, 
another essence equal to his own, but in communicating his one simple essence, and in like manner the Holy Spirit proceeds, not by a multiplication of the essence, but he proceeds by a communication of the same, same singular essence by one eternal sp sp spiration, ooh, spiration, from the Father and the Son as from one principle. Okay, uh, chapter and verse, oh, didn't quote any scripture there because there's no scripture for this stuff. But uh, <clears throat> I'll show you the page here. You can see that. You say, what book is that? <clears throat> the church teaches. Documents of the church in English translation by Jesuits. Jesuit fathers of St. Mary's College in Kansas. And they have lots of nice anathemas in here. If you, uh, We pronounce anathema against those who do not proclaim with complete freedom that he, the Holy Spirit, is of one power and substance with the Father and the Son. Right there, page 125, the Council of Rome in 382. Right there. Written by Jesuits. Well, that wasn't written by Jesuits. They're just compiling it that was there as far as, far as uh, church doctrine. Jesuits weren't around in 382. Spirit was there. It's called Antichrist Spirit, but uh, we won't get into that. <clears throat> Isn't it funny that I get a lot of people in the comments that are basically saying the same things as official Catholic doctrine, where you're anathematized if you don't believe in it? Nothing to it. No, there's nothing to it, of course. And again, please take care of these books. <clears throat> Show you a couple more things here. Here you have the Forgotten Trinity <clears throat> by James R. White. And I realize now that I had a brother tell me that he has a new book out now where he abandoned the Trichetra on the front here, the three interlocking circles, you know. He abandoned that. Now he has a triangle <clears throat> like this. Doesn't have the all seeing eye in it, of course. That would be too obvious. And he also took off, James White's newest edition also took off a certain, uh, um, you know, what do you promoter? call it? Promoter. Thank you. <clears throat> My church is entering the new millennium with a three-year focus on the Blessed Trinity. Dr. White highlights a vital truth. The mystery of the Trinity is true related, truly related to how we love God. Our faith in the Trinity is the same. One God, three co-equal persons. Father Mitchell Pacwa, Society of Jesus, Jesuit priest, assistant professor, University of Dallas. I wonder why James White would take that quotation off of the back of his reprinted book. You mean to tell me a Jesuit would promote a book like this by a uh, <coughs> Protestant? <coughs> and you got uh, Dr. John MacArthur down here. He loves the book too, right there. And over here, J.I. Packer, John Armstrong, Dr. Norman L. Geisler, Geiser, Geyser, <laughs> um, another Jesuit. Been to, I mean, he's not a Jesuit priest. I understand that, but he's been to a Jesuit university. I think more than one. So again, absolute care is to be taken with these rare materials. <clears throat> now we're going to show something from my wife's past here, uh, part of her. Uh, upbringing. Go ahead, show them. Hold it up. It's show and tell. Luther's small catechism. For those who don't know, she was raised Lutheran. LCMS Lutheran. Considered the conservative branch. Mm -hmm. The one closest to the denomination in Germany. Yep. <clears throat> So uh, it's talking about God as a spirit and everything else here. And, um, and <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what, put, you, put the bark mark in that one. We'll show that one next. Getting ahead of me here. It's terrible. Okay, read the number 20, Six. what is it, 26. Question 26. Who is the only true God? The only true God is the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, three distinct persons and one divine being, or essence, the Holy Trinity. Mm -hmm. Let me show it here. Whoops. 
it fell out of there. There you go. Right there. Notice the interesting symbol up to here. You know, the old, uh, the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit. Is, you know, they're all God. Get it? And you say, oh, now come on now, you're drawing this all-seeing eye thing. That There's no correlation between the all-seeing eye of Luciferianism. There's nothing there. Okay, this is just slander. This is libel and slander against us beautiful Trinitarian people. That we don't believe this way. Can I show it? Yes, please do. Thank you. <laughs> We're having fun. Uh-oh. Right there it is. Right there's the all-seeing eye in Luther's small catechism. Let's show the hmm. uh, publishing information. Go ahead. Here's the infamous publisher in St. Louis. See that? Concordia in St. Louis, Missouri. Hmm. And uh, check out the copyright information. See that copyright? Isn't that something? Hmm. Yep. So, very interesting. You say, but the, the Catholic Church doesn't do the all-seeing eye. Really? How about that one? How about that? Just like the Lutheran Catechism. Yes. And here we have, We exalt thy providence, O Lord, and we submit to all its decrees. We exalt thy providence, the soldiers by confirmation. We give thee our unquestioning obedience. We submit to all the decrees of thy providence. We cannot pick nor choose. Give us the grace to surrender completely to thee without reserve. We exalt thy providence, O Lord, and we submit to all its decrees. Sister Mary Jean Roth, CDP. Hmm. Catholics? Writing on a book of divine providence? Hmm. You say, well, uh, we again, Catholics, we, 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 we don't, it, it, you know, we won't submit to this. Nihil Obstat, imprimatur, nothing objectionable, lines up with Catholic teaching. And here we have different uh, articles, the contents, table of contents here. You have Conformity to the Will of God, Reverend C.A. Herbst, S.J., Society of Jesus. On the Providence of God for His Children, Reverend Jean Grew, S.J., Society of Jesus. And Spiritual Opiates, Reverend Joseph P. Fisher, Society of Jesus. Three Jesuits writing on the issue of divine providence. One of Calvin's big stands that he took, John Calvin. Hmm. hmm. More on this in the future. Let me show you another interesting one here. Again, we have the Vatican book here put out showing all the insane wealth of this satanic city of Babylon. And here on this page, we have this, uh, uh, what's the thing called? Altar of the chair. Right, there's okay, the yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But we have this altar of the chair thing here. This weird satanic looking altar. What did the Bible say? He sits in the throne, in the seat. The dragon gives him his seat and power and great authority. Hmm. And what's the... Uh, Little stained glass window right there. Why, it's a dove. Huh. With the light rays of the sun coming down onto the throne. How about that? And look up there. The dove. Altar of the chair, completed in 1666. That's a coincidence. Sure. The altar contains the relics of a chair St. Peter used to preach from. The Catholics and their relics. You know, here's a piece of uh, Paul's toothbrush that he once used, and here's uh, John's, uh, um, you know, ticket that he used when he went on a ride in a chariot or something. You know, weird stuff. It symbolizes the, it symbolizes the teaching authority of the papacy. Right there. 
Maybe I can get this thing on camera. 1666. Don't tell me that that's a coincidence. They built a throne there, an altar to commemorate a throne showing authority. Hmm. How about that? I mean, you, you, if you don't believe this stuff, if you're just saying, oh, there's no truth, you're just spiritually dead and blind and you can't see a thing. There's no way, no nice way to put it. But let's conclude this little thing here with the official catechism of the Catholic Church. Make sure I get that right. There we go. This is their official catechism right there. Page 77, number 260. The ultimate end of the whole divine economy is the entry of God's creatures into the perfect unity of the blessed Trinity. Perfect unity. Perfect unity. Right there you have it. The blessed Trinity is the Antichrist. It is Satan's system. If you continue to, to just stay in this thing and you just refuse to, to submit to the King James Bible that says nothing about persons, nothing about Trinity, nothing about God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, nothing about divine essence or whatever else, you refuse to, the, to submit to the truth of the Word of God and you keep holding on to this thing right here, uh, you got some real rough times ahead of you. You're going to go to hell. You're going to burn. Is it a salvation issue? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. This thing here is just so clear. When you do this study, when you look at this whole thing, the Spirit, just plain as day. There is no dove in the King James Bible. Right? The devil is getting people ready to worship this dove. Okay? And it's the dragon gives his power to the beast right there. And yet they worship the beast. You see? This dove is going to give its power to the beast. And then the father, the, uh, what's the Pope called? Holy Father? Huh. How about that? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Father, and their Holy Son. Hmm. Very interesting. And, and like I said, I mean, I, I, I have spent a long time now just debunking this whole Trinity thing. Every angle, every point. And yet there are people that still refuse to submit to this whole thing. Why? Well, they're antichrists. It's just as simple as that. They refuse to admit that they are wrong and that they are worshiping Satan in reality. Uh, if you're still clinging to this thing, you know, and you're claiming to be Christian, um, what more can I say? Uh, I, I just, what do I do? You know, um, the proof is just there. It's absolutely there. The Catholics are setting up the system of the Antichrist. And that time is going to come when you worship, when people will worship the, the Antichrist and his and and you know the dragon. And over here, you take the mark, you lose your free will, your mind is is with this whole system here, you're in hell. Period. I can't do any more than show what I've shown. Um I guess that's about all I have to say on this issue. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever do any more videos on this whole Trinity Godhead thing and whatever else. The Lord will show me more stuff or whatever, or bring it out. But um, I'd say we've covered it very well and uh, pretty much left no stone unturned unless the Lord shows me something else. But I mean, how do you refute this? How do you refute this stuff? So that's going to be it. For this study, um, what more can I say? If you haven't repented, well, then you're probably not going to make it. It's just as simple as that. So uh, I guess we'll see in future videos. Going to be doing a video here in the future on the issue of privacy. Does a Christian have a right to privacy? What about privacy issues in the Bible? Whatever else. Um, on the whole online world, Big Brother, all that other stuff. Uh, going to be a big study that we're going to be doing uh, together. My wife, former military intelligence, she has a lot of insight into this issue. And um, so we're going to be doing a, a big study on that. 
but uh, this just if I could say that I have a final video that just puts the nail in the coffin of this whole Trinity thing, um, this is it. Uh, I can keep on preaching and preaching and preaching on this issue, but if you haven't been convinced by now, there's no hope for you. There really is no hope for you. Um, there's no Trinity in the Bible as far as a the Trinity of God, the, the Godhead or whatever. This isn't the Godhead. Okay, uh, This is the Trinity, and it is satanic. And it's going to damn so many people to hell. Um, it's Satan's system. Enough said. So that is going to be it. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized. And we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.